five axis module can again simulate all types of machines. So just to give you a bit of a demonstration, we have three structural types here. We have uh, spindle rotating, which should be spindle tilting. We have a rotary table and a hybrid uh, configuration. So for example, if we pick the rotary table and we use A axis as the primary tilting axis and C axis as the secondary axis on top of the A axis, we can build it and our model here will change so that we can actually see it. So just to show you how dynamic this is, if I select B, the table itself should actually rotate uh, orthogonally at 90 degrees. We get that B. So the good thing about this module as well is that we have a built-in feasibility check. So if I try to pick C axis on C axis, and if I check if this works, it doesn't work. It's not feasible. It's not right. a feasible design. Exactly. So uh, you, you won't be stuck building things that are impossible. So to show you the uh, spindle rotating one, or spindle tilting, again, if I pick A and, and C axis, and if I build it, you get another configuration up here. Right. And again, we can also uh, switch it again. Yeah. With things like this. I think uh, we covered, we checked almost 50, 253 climatic configurations, yeah. which are physically possible. Okay, but in industry, I think they are limited to about maybe less than 10. Yeah. Okay. So let's load uh, an example that we have ran numerous times. So we'll go virtual CNC examples. Climatic configurations. So this five-axis rigid drive example is the machine that we, you saw in 1050 yesterday, the Fidal machine. So we'll take a look at that. Look at our configuration. Build. This should actually be A. Yeah. So that's the machine that we all know. So that's basically the power of the uh, five-axis uh, module and that's just configuring the axis. So the next step is to load in the tool path files. Here uh, we can either create our own files. You can do rapid transverse and start at say zero 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 and then if we want to move 10 millimeters in the X axis we can just add that. Oh, we have to add a feed rate too. Say we want to go 100 millimeters per second approximately and you get that. But this is three axis command. How about A and B? A and B, uh, that has not been included yet. Okay. Yeah, at we the should. Moment. Yeah. That's uh, Jan's task. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> do that. So this, you can com you can uh, generate uh, uh, tool paths using the software, or you can take existing feed uh, existing tool paths, uh, such as this one. So this is something that's punched out of uh, a CAD CAM system. So you have uh, just your number, uh, linear or rapid transverse. You have your feed rate. You have your spindle uh, speed. And then you have all the coordinates uh, in the Cartesian space. So you can also take a look at the toolpath. And this is a basic uh, flank milling toolpath. That's impeller machining yeah. toolpath for five axis. OK. So. No, this is, uh, we, we don't have post-processor here. Yeah, there's no post-processor. It is, uh, we use standard APT file that all CAM systems generate, yeah. OK? I think APT is universal, right? APT yeah. is universal. Yeah. But not every CAM software uh, follows universal standards. Mm -hmm. Then we have to tweak it a bit. So if we want to take and a look with at this. F again. command, feed rate command. Yeah. Okay. So just to go through this is just the number. This denotes the type of path, so whether it's rapid, transverse, or linear, or you can even do circular. Um, this this gives you your feed rate. This gives you your uh, spindle speed. Uh, this is whether the spindle is on or off. Uh, this is your X, Y, Z, I, J, and finally K. 
Okay, so moving on, this is, this is the basic toolpath module. And once we have our toolpath, we want to schedule uh, how fast we want to travel through it. So that goes into trajectory generation. So we have several kinematic modules that we can use. Uh, there's the most basic trapezoidal velocity, which is the most aggressive one too, all the way up to cubic acceleration. And we also have this optimized feed rate that ensures that you can travel your fastest speed without saturating uh, any of the drives, because each drives have limit. And this is based upon the work that uh, Barack Sender did in 2009. And uh, um, let me just uh, go to this one to observe. Velocity. Yeah. If you look at here, velocity is increasing linearly uh, at a constant acceleration rate, and jerk is infinite. This is the poorest trajectory <coughs> generator because acceleration times inertia is the force. It acts like a hammer impact uh, force on the machine during high speed, high acceleration motion. The machine will vibrate even without cutting. So if you go to cubic acceleration, now everything is smooth. If you take FFT of acceleration, it will have less frequency content. Therefore, it will excite the machine less, okay? So the motion will be smoother. And next, uh, when the commercial machines, CNC's, use, uh, let's say you have five drives, X, Y, Z, A, and B, they use the most conservative torque limit on all drives. Let's say one of them has five newton meter torque, the others have 50 newton meter torque, and they will use they use that five newton meter torque as a limit for all of them. But depending on the motion, maybe you need only one newton meter torque from that drive and 30 from the others. No need to slow down the machine. This function here automatically uses maximum torque limit of each drive and optimizes the feed accordingly. And you can get cycle time reduction two three times just based on this algorithm, okay? And uh, Alex is working on this as well for five axis. And so is Kizan, he's, he's not here, okay? Continue. Okay. So those are the different uh, velocity feed profiles that you can pick. So in addition to scheduling your feed, we can also uh, do certain things like, for example, input shaping. Uh, we showed you that yesterday in the lab. This is vibration avoidance. Yeah. Vibration avoidance. Uh, we change the trajectory commands in such a way we don't excite this mode. And on top of that, we can also do contour error compensation. Yeah. So, what's the difference point to point interpolation and the other one? So we have uh, two types of interpolation. We can do point to point, which, given the scheduled um, GO1 codes, the points uh, specified in this data, given these points, all we do in point to point is stitch a single line between the two points. So that's the most basic linear interpolation that you can do. And Most machines, uh, uh, they break sculptured two paths, sculptured surfaces into small G01 segments, okay? like this. Although the real curve is probably spline, but they prefer to break this into G01 because many machines do not have nerves, interpolators, and so on. This is commonly used in industry, although, but this is not that good because of discontinuities here. Next, yeah. yeah. So the problem is at each point you have to stop and then start again. So to avoid that, what mm -hmm. we can do is uh, continuously interpolate. And what we do is we fit a smooth spline instead of uh, just linearly interpolating. So you can pass through each point at, a, at a some given velocity. And here, uh, in order to increase the speed of our machining, we can smooth sharp corners uh, given some tolerance. So we can actually travel around that corner even faster. What and is the order of uh, spline here? This one? Cubic spline? I believe this one is cubic. It looks like it's cubic. It should mm -hmm. be quintic, but this is just an illustration. Mm -hmm. No, no, I mean in the, in the software. In the software, it's quintic. Fifth order. Yeah, fifth order. Spline. Uh, fifth order spline 
in the space, right? It's a geometric yes. plan we are talking yeah. about. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, as mentioned, you can also smooth the corners that as some uh, CNC uh, CNCs do. So that option is available to us. And uh, on top of that, we can also uh, set our joint limits. So each of the servo drives, as Dr. Alpash mentioned, has their own torque limits. So we have to select these uh, when we're simulating our drives. What's the plane compass? We don't know to this day. Hmm? We don't know to this day. I don't know what that does. Mm -hmm. Do you know, Jin, what does it? Yeah. I believe what it does is it actually um, it forces the software to use these uh, the NURBS representation as opposed to timestamp data. We should. Uh, uh, we had the manual, right, for virtual CNC, and we should find this in uh, in the help file, maybe. So it has a built-in help file. Okay, so carrying on, uh, after we've generated a trajectory, what we want to do is we actually want to simulate the um, whole system. So in this module, uh, what you have to do is basically select your closed loop dynamics for each drive. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can set things like uh, the inertia, the damping, your electronic parameters, and your uh, mechanical parameters, such as uh, pitch length, gear reduction, backlash, and these are all used in the simulation. And you can also look at your block diagram to give you an idea of what you're actually, s what each parameter actually means. So we have different options here. We can either we can also do a linear servo drive, so a linear table and they have the same types of parameters, but in the appropriate units, because it's a linear, as opposed to rotary. Is that necessary if you some point you don't get it? How do you You have to engineer it yourself? You go yeah. cancel this? Okay. So, here, you go to, uh, let me do that. Yeah, but you well, uh, you have to have some background in designing uh, CNC systems to put these parameters, and those engineers know. Uh, this total reflected inertia to the motor shaft means inertia, m mass of the table, will be transmitted as an equivalent inertia using pitch length of the ball screw. Okay? And uh, then the ball screw has its own inertia. Pi d power 4 divided by 64. Okay, something like that. It's in my book. All these calculations are given in my book. And this is the DTA converter, 16-bit DTA chip. Plus minus 10 volt is the range of the DTA converter chip if you are using analog drive. And this is torque constant of the motor, which is given by the manufacturer. And uh, torque limit is also given by the manufacturer, okay? And pitch length, transmission ratio, uh, this, this is calculated automatically. You can put backlash. You can put, put friction, like this. This is column friction. You measure the friction on the guides. This is 1.64 Newton meter in positive and the other is negative direction. But this is uh, like a constant friction, column friction. However, you can even do very co uh, so strive back, yeah. very sophisticated friction field like this for precision machine tool control because this is more realistic but more difficult to measure. Our, we know how to measure these things. Our guys do this. All right? We can always help if you have if, uh, any precision machinery application. No, you can. This is completely dependent on the machine tool you are building. So you <coughs> have to measure it yourself. Okay? There are techniques to measure these frictions. Okay? Uh, some of them, electrical motor, motor manufacturer gives it. But if you are building a machine tool, the rest, 
you have to do it yourself. Okay? Then we considered your question, and if you forgot, salt mechanics. So you enter mass of the table, workpiece, and we calculate it for you automatically. Okay, it's, it has built-in calculator. So this is the mass of the table, let's say 500 kilogram, maximum mass of the workpiece. Uh, you calculate uh, weight of the lid screw using the density times value, okay? And inertia of the motor shaft is given by the motor builder, supplier, and pitch length, pitch diameter, then it will calculate everything automatically for you. All right, good. And this is the block diagram. So J is the total inertia reflected on the motor shaft, B is the viscous damping, RG depends on the pitch length of the ball screw, and uh, this is a millimeter, we always use millimeter to avoid encoder resolution, but you can also use encoder units as well. Okay. Good. Uh, do you know how to use this one? Here, this is a fabric, this is similar to Spindle Pro. You can, uh, let me, I think we have an example. Yeah. Okay, can you load the example? This is very important, I think, for PMC, this part. How do you design ball screw drives? How do you calculate its dynamics? And it is interaction with the controller. Load oh, mode. Okay. So you can build the whole ball screw like Spindle Pro, and we have built-in finite element analysis module. So these are the nodes you can see. Then uh, how do you get the mod shape, model analysis now? You go to the model analysis. Okay. So uh, look at uh, 246 mode, number three mode. Configure the mode shapes. And oh. oh. I think I had to select one of the frequencies. Yeah. That becomes FRF, like a tap testing of the ball screw. And mode shape, can we look at the mode shape? Uh, okay. Let's select let's select uh, ball, ball screw. Plot mode shape, maybe. Oh, right. I think this is an exaggerated. It's exaggerated view of mod shape. Mod shape is like a snake. Uh, ball screw is uh, acting like a snake. This is, I think, bending mode of the ball. Second bending mode of the ball screw. <coughs> so the ball screw will do this when it moves. Okay. Okay, good. Let's not uh, go to more details anymore. Okay, you can close this. Okay. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so that's just the feed drive module. And uh, if you really want, you can also just completely do mathematically without any uh, physical parameters. You can measure the machine <laughs> and develop your own mathematical model and plug it in, plug the transfer function yourself. And of course, we can do it either in a continuous model or a, or a discrete model, the Z domain. So in addition to modeling the feed drive, we also want to control the machine. And this module is particularly important for the real-time application because whatever you set in this module is not just for the simulation. It's what will be controlling the actual machine if you want to plug virtual CNC with a real machine. And we have uh, all types of controllers. We have the simplest P controller, to the most sophisticated uh, adaptive sliding mode controller. P controller, proportional controller, 
and uh, go to no go back to controls yeah and uh, P and PI third one yeah. that's Siemens Heidenheim Fanuc controller structure and the first one you can see here uh, PI controller is the velocity loop and KP is the position loop gain this is pretty standard and if you add uh, fit forward friction compensation oh, oh it's, it's because we don't have a friction model okay so for example what we, what we have to do is do this uh, let's do that and we can uh, uh, yeah we can include a friction model and let's just insert one and uh, one minus one, one yeah. mm -hmm. okay and then if we go back to controller yeah, that becomes now, an option. Now you can put friction compensation as well. Uh, this is very important when you do circular interpolation. If you don't compensate the friction, you will see glitches in at every 90 degree. Okay? And you can make it even more complicated by using Stryberg curve. But one has to be very careful with the Stryberg curve because it can overcompensate. Right? And active damping, now that is uh, uh, the new feature in Heidenheim. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's very simple. Good. So, yeah, the controller module allows you to essentially pick from a variety of controllers. And we also have a new custom controller module. And I believe. Yes, let's try that. I think it loads a. Mm -hmm. Is it similar? Yeah, loads of simulant file. Okay. Okay, yeah. So, when we look at our block diagram, we have uh, this happening. We have our feed drive, and we have um, the error coming into the controller. So what you can actually do is load a controller in here. Instead of uh, designing all the individual bits, you can design one your own? One, your own controller in Simulink and then just put that in that spot, right? And how we can do that is just loading the model in here. And it allows you to input a uh, MATLAB MDL file. So there's all three axes can be controlled. And of course, uh, your A, B, C axis if uh, the five axis will so let's just run an example through the simulation so we can see how this all gets together. Get the access, uh, simple one. Okay. You can. Yes, yes, yes. I, if you have to, because rotary drive is different than x-axis. Y-axis may be shorter than x-axis with different inertia, okay. different controller settings. So this is a basic three mm. axis example. Tool path is... Simple, so uh, just plot it. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the tool path. This is assignment to my students, 40 students. They are doing that right now in the lab. Okay. So let's do basic point to point, and let's start with something very simple. And they are using feed drive. Uh, look at feed drive first. This is the setting, okay. And uh, of the this is the real machine we have downstairs. Fadal. And okay. And look at the. Uh, okay, good. Yeah. And controller. Oh yeah. It is uh, like uh, with friction compensation. This is. Uh, similar to Siemens controller, Siemens Heidenheim PI, cascaded controller is called, uh, but there is a uh, there is a bandpass filter there as well. But this is with active damping. Did, did we set? Uh, no, we didn't. So we just yeah. this off. Okay. Y axis, I think it's the same thing. Yeah. Z axis. This is not important. It's a planar path. Mm. Okay. All right. Um, oh, is there anything else you want to see? <coughs> feedback measurement. Um, yeah, okay. click on feedback. Here you can put your uh, encoder, tucker generator, and even accelerometric feedback. 
if you have accelerometric feedback for active damping. Okay. Then next. Now here in simulation, uh, these are states. We call them states. If, uh, for example, command to x-axis, y-axis, z-axis, commands are position, velocity, acceleration, and jerk. This is the error between x-axis command, axis command, and the real position of the machine. On the CNCs, this is called following error on the screen. In theoretically, they are tracking error. They are called tracking error. And we have the controller. Then here, the controller sends commands to amplifier of the machine through DTA converter. Machine moves, and the encoder measures the actual position. Okay, and you can trace all the variables inside the amplifier, machine, and so on. You can look at all of them, like you would be measuring on the machine simultaneously. Uh, also, for the designer, you can design, you can check frequency response function of the drive itself without the controller. And it gives you also mathematically the transfer function of the drive here. And also, uh, we must be able to look at closed loop uh, FRF as well. I think we have it somewhere. You know yeah, that? I just clicked uh, this again. So we can actually, um, where is it? Right, this one. So okay. we can do closed loop response. Closed loop. You can look at individual parts, like the drive itself, or after you design the controller. <coughs> now, this is the real drive now, including the controller, okay? So we can just uh, run the simulation and see what the results give us. So this will just take a few, just take a few seconds. So this is the uh, plotting it in 3D, the entire tool path, and what we see is just uh, the pink is the reference tool path and the blue is the simulated tool path, and what you see is uh, it simulates the low bandwidth of the controllers. So that's why it has these uh, smooth, that's why the corners are all smoothed out. So if we picked a better, more aggressive controller, we would have these uh, smoothing. So this just kind of demonstrates the, they can actually simulate poor performing controllers as well. So as Dr. Antosh mentioned, we can uh, simulate the, we can actually look at the position, velocity, acceleration, and jerk of the reference commands uh, versus the simulated. Uh, so if I just look at this x-axis, you can see, if we look at the velocity, same idea, acceleration, same idea. So in addition to all this, we can also look at the tracking error of uh, the axes itself. So from this module, we have, you can basically simulate every aspect uh, of your entire uh, CNC system, uh, given your trajectory, your plant, uh, and even your controller. So yeah, that's that's about it. Okay, yeah. So the axis uh, tracking toolbox basically uh, simulates how well one axis responds to certain commands, and usually you can discern uh, information. So for example, you can give a input uh, step function. Right. So we can run this analysis. It'll just take a few seconds. Yeah, and this basically shows your control signal. And this is the important information here. So the red is your given command, and the blue is the response. And from this information, you can figure out 
uh, certain characteristics of your closed loop system. So, but more importantly, uh, when it comes to actually machining something, the contouring toolbox is uh, a little more important because it actually shows you the actual error um, from the tooltip to the closest point on the tool path. So, just to show you, and uh, there's three different trajectories you can run, and I believe the diamond and the circle are uh, standard tests. So, we can just give that a try. Just take a few seconds again. So this shows the uh, x, y axis and their position, velocity, and tracking error. And this shows the contour error. So again, the tooltip to the closest point on the tool path. So this is, this is the most important thing when, uh, when we're machining something, because we're not worried about the tracking error. We're worried about uh, how close is the, is the tool to what we want right now. Yes. We have that too. Yeah, we have that as well. Yeah. yeah. And uh, can you show the two part? She sh he showed actually. Yeah. Here. Yeah, we have this as well. Okay. So basically, the contour error is from this point closest to the reference that we want. So we take a look here. For uh, precision tracking, precision machining, that error must be as small as possible. Yeah. That's a huge research activity in our laboratory. Over the years, last 15 years, that's what we have been working on. Okay. So, so uh, you can, if you look at these, Uh, this is tracking error, he showed. Yep. This is the counter test. These are diamond and circle, you know, these are machine tool testing standards. So you can test the CNC virtually on this as well. Okay, what uh, uh, we are also doing here in the drive, you can already include structural dynamics of the machine reflected to the motor shaft. But we are uh, uh, working in a field that we want to have a finite element model of the machine, analyze it, bring it here, then we want to connect this software with the visualizer, sort model of the machine. So if we control, you can see how the machine is vibrating under control. I actually does this in Stuttgart, you saw. There's virtues. I showed I introduced you to the guys in remember? I asked Stuttgart. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, Virtuos, yeah. They have a very comprehensive system. Uh, more comprehensive than of course this one. And it's called Virtuos. Mm -hmm. And it's a commercial it's a huge software. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, but we can do this. Uh, another idea is uh, Dr. Kao uh, has a uh, machine simulator, right? But he doesn't have this. So uh, his idea is can we connect this one to his machine tool simulator? We can. It's very easy. <laughs> okay. It's just a data transfer to his system. Instead of reading NC blocks, he does this, this. Right? We, will, we will give him lots of points along the path so he can, he can move the machine accordingly. It's very simple interface. Something PMC can do. Because that project is under your control, right? Yes. It's very easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can connect this your uh, machine simulator very easily. It's a very easy software interface. <coughs> and we will help. This is what we discussed, right? In yes. When I was in Taiwan last time. And also, Taiwan is using our new 5X machine. 
Yes. That is the next topic. We haven't, I haven't forgotten that. <laughs> okay. Mark is there. He will teach you in a second <laughs> how to do that. All right? You are talking about the physical interface between this and your Firefox machine. Yeah. Okay. That's the next topic. Do you have any questions about virtual CNC? Fabi? You have to measure the friction on the real machine. You can't do it from here, right? And one uh, subroutine we can add, uh, identification of the friction. Uh, in fact, Amir did this. He sent it to Derek, how to identify the uh, parameters of the machine automatically. Uh, we developed some techniques, and uh, I, uh, Amir is going to integrate it here. So you push the button, you load this into CNC of the machine, push the button, we collect data, then automatically we identify friction, inertia, and damping. Okay? And uh, those, it is best that when you have a machine, ask us, and we'll guide you through. It is difficult to explain unless you do it. Okay. At the moment, we have uh, six people working on this uh, in the CNC. Here, we have accumulated 25 tw years of knowledge research here in the software. So it's quite comprehensive. It is uh, good for research and teaching. This is not good for to build, at, uh, I mean, this is not a commercial CNC. Commercial CNC, you have lots of buttons and uh, safety checks and so on. This is a teaching and uh, R&D develop R&D platform. Okay. So, if you have an idea, let's say you want to see. The interaction between the machine tool structure and specific controller, you can plug the machine dynamics here and see how it's going to work very rapidly without spending a couple of years of writing software. It's all that. 